Hey everybody, good afternoon. It's about uh, 10 minutes to 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, it is Wednesday, Wednesday, the 14th of July, 2021. Uh, what I'd like to take a do, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a look at Bitcoin, um, the S&P Nasdaq. I'm also going to take a look at Russell. I'm going to take a look at Russell. Um, probably going to also take a look at Dow Jones. Uh, you know, a couple things that I don't usually do. Um, but we've been talking in our insured room a lot about market rotation. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, before I get into all of this, of course, as you all know, this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. You're responsible for your own trades, managing your own risk, doing your own research. And I'm just giving my opinion on the market. Uh, so let's go ahead and move into the charts. All right. So I've got Ethereum on here. And um, th throw a comment in the chat and let me know that you can you can hear me. I've got uh, my Streamlabs is um, it's, it's acting up a little bit. So I want to make sure that you can hear me. Um, so I've got my chart here on Ethereum because I was just looking at it. I was just doing a little bit of a, an update here. Um, you know, I've been I've been really eyeing this this pivot down here and how the one hour, the three hour and the 12 hour all aligned pretty well down here at the bottom. Um, and then we came right back down here and we created a higher low. And what it would appear is that we've potentially created some hidden bullish divergence on on the 12 hour. Uh, it looks pretty good, actually. So I would say that we're creating a little bit of a pivot low down here, a pivot that I would be interested in buying, which I have, uh, which I have. Of course, I'm already long in Ethereum. Um, looking at this, taking this all the way up here to the top. That 618 is right there. I'm on a log scale. Um, potentially, we I suppose we could come back down here to the 786. Wouldn't surprise me if we did. A couple things that I see. Of course, 1 hour 3 and the 12 hour are all down here at the same time, which is usually a good indication that there's going to be a bounce. Um, and there was. There was a bounce here. It wouldn't surprise me one bit for us to come back down here to the 786, which is going to be at about 1830. Uh, so... You know, it's just something I would be paying attention to. Um, we don't have the same kind of a pullback on Ethereum that we do on Bitcoin. Um, I do happen to be a little bit more bullish on alts than I am on Bitcoin. But let me just go ahead and clear this off. I want to pull this out. And actually, I, my Coinbase chart, I've got this lined up a little bit better. Um, I like the way this is uh, this is lined up. So let's just talk about this for a moment. So from down here, this looks corrective, right? I can't get an impulse off of this. It really doesn't matter how you point it out. I do have this alternate here for a one, but I'm favoring the A scenario here. So it does look like we have an A, B, C, potentially an A, B, C, although you could count this as a W, X, Y, X, Z, if you really want to. Um, you know, we see nice, uh, a nice channel that we were kind of going down here. So this right here, nice lower. You got these three lowers here. You've got a nice, you know, I guess the channel doesn't really work out. You really have a little bit more um, compression than you do a channel, which is still, it's still pretty bullish when you're creating a wedge like this. We pull this down here and then we pull this guy right here. We do see that we're starting to create a little bit of compression where that means, of course, the top is decreasing. I mean, you could really pull this down and call this a trap if you'd like, but it looks to me like this isn't necessarily a channel, but we do want to push up and out of here. I, I do believe we do want to push up and out of here. Taking a look at this, looking at the waves, right? So I always, I always take a look at this. Again, it looks corrective here. This looks corrective. This also looks corrective as it should. It doesn't look like we have any kind of like a leading diagonal or anything like that. This looks like a corrective move. We had the one hour and the three hour down here right at the same time as at the uh, 618. I think it's probably likely we'll come back down here, but I went ahead and took a long just in case we do decide to move up. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if we did move up. That three hour is still, you know, kind of moving in the upward direction. Now the 12 hour is down, the one hour is curling, um, but the three hour still looks pretty healthy, which is one of the reasons why I took that long position. Um, you know, I've got a really tight stop on that. And if I get stopped out, then I'm going to be looking to get back in somewhere down here, <clears throat> excuse me, around the 618, which that's going to be right back down here around uh, about 31.6, somewhere in the 31.6. And of course, this is on um, this is on the Coinbase price, just, just for the record there. 
uh, on Coinbase price. So for now, I would say that if we do get this bounce up out of here, out of this golden zone, which you know comes down here to about again from 31.6 down to probably about 31.3, somewhere in this range, um, I think that is very likely we're going to find ourselves back up here at about 39,000. Let me go to a three-hour time frame and get rid of the waves indicator for a moment, and let's just talk through this here for a moment. Um, again, we've got two scenarios here. Um, the least likely, which gets us up here to about 59,000, and then the most likely, which gets us down here to about 39,000. That, again, if I measure from the top down here to the bottom, internal retracement gets me to this 382. And measuring from this dominant pivot low to this dominant pivot high, coming back down here to the 618, Again, some of my favorite trades are buying at the 618 and selling at the negative 236. That's going to be right up here. Is it likely that we go higher? I wouldn't say it's likely. I'd say it's possible. I would say that if we do push up and out of here, so in other words, if off of this pivot low here, right, again, we could come back down here, but if we push up and we get here, if we get this rejection, then I think this is the top. If we continue pushing through, I believe we find ourselves all the way up here at 47, then we do a pullback and then retest these pivots here, find some support there. And then I think we actually find ourselves higher up here at about 59,200. Now, I don't think we're gonna break 60. That takes us up here to the 887. One way or another, I'm looking for this B to be either down here at the bottom of this A, B, C, or all the way up here at the top of this one, two, three, four, five. We got two scenarios. Um, both actually are favoring upward price action from where we currently are, which is why I am favoring a long position. Are we in a bear market? I mean, it's hard to disagree that we're not in a, in a bear market right now. I would say that we do have a little bit of bearish tendencies. Um, you've got people that spent three months um, buying up here uh, when the price was above 50000 So naturally, you see this big markdown in price. You're going to have people that bought up here. They're going to be wanting to get out of their position as soon as possible, which is one of the reasons why I don't think we're going to break 60. I actually don't think we're probably going to break 50, this, this, this level right here, which is at about 53, if we do happen to get up there. Um, I think that this rejection, if we, this is a 1, 2, 3, we're going to get this rejection either here at the 618, or we're gonna get the rejection up here, which is probably right around the 786, which is gonna be about 52,000. Um, that's if we're really, really bullish. And again, I'm not overly bullish right now. Um, I tend to believe that we are in a corrective pattern and it's going, it's, it's a very, very, um, what's the word I wanna use? It's boring. It's boring. Nobody likes to trade this stuff. But, but naturally, if you were to buy at 30,000, sell at 40,000, buy at 31,000, sell at 39,000. You know, you can see here, buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. But everybody is wanting to get that big move to new highs. And that's just not the market that we're in right now. Ever since we had this push down here on May 19th, right after tax day, right after we had that big push down, it's been nothing but chop. So therefore, the equilibrium of this is where I would be, you know, really interested in just kind of maintaining um, your uh, your bias. So we start over here. Let's just move this guy straight out and move this guy up here where we had our rebound right there. Okay, I'm taking this from, and I apologize that there's so much going on in this chart. Um, actually, you know what, just because of that, I'm gonna go to a different chart because it's gonna be about the same no matter where we go. Uh, so let me see if I can pull BTC USD on, um, here. This is on uh, on Bitfinex. So I don't usually do a whole lot on here. I'm going to take it from this dominant pivot low right here, move it straight out, get it as straight as I can. All right, I'm going to pull it all the way up here to this pivot up here. So I've got a dominant pivot low here, I've got a dominant pivot high up here, I've got my equilibrium right here. So I have to be a little bit bearish below the equilibrium and I have to be pretty bullish above it. But down here in this in the bottom section has been great for buying. When you get up here to this upper section, has been great for selling. And until we break through this channel, that's 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 the zone that we're in. We're just chopping. We're just chopping. And it's annoying. 
um, and it's really causing a lot of people to get driven away from the space. And that is what that's what they want you to do. When I say they, I just mean the people that actually control the market. Because let's face it, you don't control the market. I don't control the market. We can only read what the market gives us. And so we have to see the market for what it is. And we can see here we've got, you know, buying opportunities. You've got selling opportunities. And until we break through in one way or another, that's that's what we do. We're just moving up and moving down. We're just chopping and it's really annoying and it's hard to trade. Um, so, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's really easy for me to say that because it's all there. Um, and naturally, you know, if you were trading this, you would see this as a one, two, and you'd be like, okay, well, we're just going to be rebounding. We're going to come back up here. Uh, but what happened? We ended up just chopping and we've just been chopping, chop, chop, chop. Um, so, you know, again, kind of going back to my original, uh, original chart here that I've got on Coinbase, I, I think that we're probably going to see some resistance here at 39 and that would make sense. We'd be above the equilibrium. We'd be back up here in these areas of redistribution. And then we kind of go from there. Um, this area up here at the top, hindsight, it does look like distribution. We had a push up and a sell off, a push up and a sell off, a push up and a bigger sell off, a push up and a final sell off. So now what do we have? I would not say that this is strong signs of accumulation. I would say this is more along the lines of redistribution, which is why I think that we're seeing the selling occurring at 39,000. The selling at 39,000. Are we going to get back up here? If we do, I think there's going to be more selling at 39,000. So I'm cautious. But I also think, based on what's happened over the last couple weeks, I think it's it's very, very possible for us, going to a four-hour time frame here, I think it is very possible for us to see this 22,000, maybe even lower, right? We really can't break the highs from 2018, though. We really have to maintain, this is, sorry, sorry, The from June of 2019. This 13,800, that's what has to hold, okay? That's the, that's the level that has to hold. Uh, let me pull that back over here. And right up here at 13,800, that's what has to hold. We can't break that. Um, now we have a 50 here at 15,923. We've got the 382 here at 22,226. That's on log scale. On a chart that looks like this, you really have to look at it in log scale. You really can't look at it off on arithmetic because the chart just looks absolutely atrocious. If you do look at it, well, we've got the 618 here at 27,389. So are we going to get a little push down here? I mean, it's possible. But I really preference looking at Bitcoin on a log scale just because it's gone parabolic. When you're looking at a chart that's gone parabolic, it's best served that you look at it on logarithmic, not arithmetic. Okay, um, that's all that I've got on Bitcoin. I want to take a look at NASDAQ. I'm going to take a look at NASDAQ using NDX. So on NDX, I think we're pretty, pretty darn close to a top. And again, I've been talking about this for a while, but one thing I do want to point out, um, I'm going to have to go to like a three day time frame in order to actually show this to you guys. So we're taking a look at this. And I was talking with uh, with my good friend um, privately, um, one of our members. You know, we have a top here. Um, this is back at basically the dot com bubble. We had a big, big pullback. But how long did it take for us to reclaim new highs? This is all the way over here. It took 16 years for us to make a new high after we saw this pullback, you know, the dot-com bubble. This is a huge, huge pullback. What I want to point out there, okay, so yeah, that was an 83% drawdown on NASDAQ. Shoot, if we had an 83% drawdown, that would be amazing. But what we've seen from this bottom, I can count a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, nice little A, B, C, maybe a W, X, Y, X, Z, whatever you want to call the correction, we had a pullback, and obviously that correction is done, right? So this is a, this is a good pivot that we had back here in November of 2008. Um, I believe that was right around election time. And from there, we had a, we've, we have had, not we had a, but we have had, and we have been having a big, strong, impulsive move to the upside. A couple things that I do want to point out with this is based on this trend-based fib extension dominant pivot low dominant pivot high 
dominant pivot internal retracement. <clears throat> 2618 is sitting right there at 15,150. And we just poked through 15,000 just today, right? I think we poked 15,001 today. I think upside is very, very, very limited. Very limited. Um, and from this dominant pivot low to wherever this ends, I think we're going to see a pretty pretty serious pullback. Um, now, do I think that it's completely done? No, I think this is a finishing move of wave three. Then we're gonna go down here for wave four. This is what I'm waiting for right here. I'm waiting for this pullback before we see that that move up here, potentially crossing that 15,150 area, maybe going to 15,2, something like that. But this looks to me like we are trying to finish um, trying to finish a move, all right? Um, and just taking a look at the slant and slope of all of these moves, I'm going to do something here. I'm just gonna continue to redraw this and I'm gonna get this off of here. I'm gonna try and do this as good as I can. So we have a good slant right here, which we had a good pivot high here, a pivot high here. We had this resistance here before we broke through prior high. When we broke through that, we had this as support. And of course, more recently, March of 2020, we found that as support again. This trend line is, it's pretty important. What trend lines do we have now? From this guy right here, again, we can see we've got that. And we broke up above it. This level right here wouldn't surprise me if we went back and retested it. Let me pull some moving averages on here so we can take a look at this. Uh, do I not have... Okay, let me pull that on here really quickly. My scripts. All right. So just getting some moving averages on here, just trying to put some perspective on this. I'm gonna remove a lot of the excess that I've got here on this uh, on this chart here. So let me get off of this because I wanna focus a little bit on the 21 exponential on the three day. It's not being nice to me here. So let me just go ahead and zoom in. All right, so we've got the 21 exponential that's sitting all the way down here at about 14,100. So that's a, an 800 point move down from where we're at right now. Uh, we've got the 30 here, which I don't pay too much attention to, but the 50 is down here at 13,300. And I'm on a three day. So, you know, maybe that's not being fair. Let's go to a daily. See what we're looking at on the daily. 21 exponential is sitting right down here at about 14.5. You've got the 50 that's sitting all the way down here at 14.1. But what's more important, in my opinion, is the 200. The last time we hit that 200 was all the way back here on February of 2020. We broke down below that 200. Um, and I don't have the measurement for this, but probably went to the 300 or 400 moving average on the daily. And we really haven't tested that at all since we broke up above it, right? So we, we tested it here, we broke up above it, we haven't come back down to it. It's not to say that we have to. You know, this cyan here is the 100. So that's gonna be the one that's more likely that we go to when we do a pullback and we will do a pullback and it, it will come back down. Right now sitting at about 13,739. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, where's the golden zone from the low in March to the high of 2021? Um, are you referring to NASDAQ? I'm going to make an assumption that you're talking about NASDAQ. The low of March 2020 to the high of 2021. So that's the high so far from where we're at right now. And again, I am on um, log scale. I'm not on arithmetic. That's 618 sitting down here at 9151. Now, I don't believe it's going to go that low. I don't think it's going to go that low. If I get off of log scale, go to arithmetic, that now becomes about 10,000. That's where the 618 is. Um, and again, if we go up just a little bit more, hitting that 15.1, well, that 618, you know, that, that is at about 10,000. Now, again, I would be surprised. Oh, on Bitcoin. Okay, but I'll just finish this thought. I would be surprised if it went down that low. Um, if we look at Bitcoin, I'll do this real quick here. If I look at Bitcoin, trying to find where that low is. Again, let me go back to log from the March lows. Okay, so let's just go. I'm going to go ahead and clear this all off here just to show this. To illustrate from the March low, 
which is about right there, to the high right there, the 618 is at about um, 11,489. In my opinion, that would invalidate this because this level, again, is what really has to hold. So I don't see the coming down here to the 618 as being possible. If it did, and it actually pivoted there, then this becomes one, two, one, two, which is insanely bullish. I don't believe that's the case. I don't believe that's what's going to happen. All right, let's take a look at the S&P real quick. And then I wanna talk about rotation because I think rotation is something that we really need to, we really need to focus on. We really need to focus on rotation because that's gonna be something that's gonna kind of get us, um, you know, kind of in the mode of, is this a bear market or is this um, actually just rotation? And I'm gonna talk about that here in a second. But from here, you know, I'm still seeing the S&P coming down here to 4,000. Right, looking at this, you know, I've got a nice one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty clean, a quick two. I can count a one, two, three, four, five into the one, ABC into the two, one, two, three, four, five into the three, and little ABC into the four, one, two, three, four. Then working on finishing that move. Potentially that move is done. I'm not I'm not ready to admit it because we're we're still, you know, fractions of a percent. Um uh, you know, away from where we, we topped out there at about 4,400. It wouldn't surprise me if we poked through it. Where did we actually top out today? Topped out today at 4,393. Yesterday, we topped out at 4,392. And the day before, we topped out at 4,386. We haven't touched 4,400. And 4,400 is just like 15,000 on NASDAQ. We just poked through 15,000 on NASDAQ. S&P hasn't really quite done as much. I think that S&P in the next month is more than likely going to go down to 4,000. Um, I think it's going to take some time, but I would say sometime before the end of August, it, we're going to find ourselves down here around 4,000. And from there, then we can, you know, we can talk about finishing um, higher, resolving higher. Um, of course, as you can see, I've got an alternate. Here's a one. If this is actually finishing a move, um, where this would be more of a, a bullish count, we would be coming down significantly. Probably back down to where the prior highs were in February of 2020. That'd be down here at about 3,400. I don't think that's going to be the case. Again, that would be pretty a pretty strong pullback. I'm more inclined to say that we're just going to be doing a little bit of a pullback. It's going to be looking very similar, again, to what we saw in September and October of last year very very boring chop it's going to kill a lot of things now why would that happen why would we do that instead of pulling all the way back down to 3300 3400 well we would do that because of options there's a lot of people that are going to be buying calls up here you know a lot of people have been buying calls have been making a lot of money buying calls you know we made some money on some bullish spreads on on individual stocks we got some bullet spreads on NASDAQ. We had some bullet spreads on the Qs. Um, now I'm to the point where I want to be a little bearish short term. So, you know, we've taken some bearish trades. One of them really didn't work out. A few of them haven't worked out, but we made enough on the way up to justify some losses trying to um, trying to make this on the way down. So, you know, I'm, I'm really taking a last, last attempt up here, um, giving myself time. I've given myself about a month on this play to do a pullback, um, I'm not targeting 4,000 on my pullback pay, play. I'm, I'm actually targeting less than that. Um, I'm just looking for this to, to see a more significant move down, and then I'll be able to take profit on that before it comes down for that second time, because I, I, I still think we're in a bull market. Um, and you can see that by looking at open interest on options. Um, open interest on options really tell you a lot, and there's a lot of puts out there. A lot of puts out there. So do I think we're going to get this pullback? Yeah, I think we are. Um, mostly because we're at a psychological level and the market doesn't move in one direction all the time. But we're going to be seeing a lot of this where you're going to have people on the pullback being you know, pretty bullish, buying all those options that are going to be way out of the money. It's going to go up in their favor. They're not going to sell because they're going to believe that they are right and it's just going to continue moving up. And then it's going to come back for that second move down. I believe that's what's actually going to happen. Um, so let me see if I can pull this up for you. I want to take a look at market rotation. All right, let me see if I can size this up for you guys so that we can take a look at this together. 
and pull in this in just a little bit more. Let's just talk a little bit about rotation. All right, so I'm looking at the daily in all of these charts. And you can see I've got the volatility indexes for all of these individual things. Wow, look at the volatility index on Dow Jones. That's pretty interesting. But at any rate, looking at the four down here on the bottom, and, and I'm going to remove Bitcoin, and I'm going to actually put in RUT. Oops, RTY, not TRY. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing the S&P 500, NASDAQ, that candle on NASDAQ doesn't look the greatest. It actually looks like tweezer tops for NASDAQ. Um, this looks like, I wouldn't call this a spinning top because we did have a day after of a, a bearish candle here. Um, but look at Russell, all right? So what did we have? We had green, green, red, green, 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 red, red, okay? And the S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow Jones Big green, little green, bearish engulfing green. Big green, little green, bearish, not engulfing. And then green, you could call this a little bit of a bullish engulfing. Big green, big green, not quite bearish engulfing, but it's a pretty, pretty bearish candle, a little bit of green. But look at this, what do we have here? We have money that is leaving the Russell 2000 stocks and moving into where? Where is it actually moving into? For the amount of money that's leaving these, uh, these, these 2,000 stocks that are made up of the Russell, they're going somewhere. Money has to be going somewhere. In some cases, money could be leaving the market. But the only way that I will be very, very, very bearish is if all four of these indexes all have red days at the same time. And I like to look at Russell because what I have found is when Russell goes down, a lot of these other indexes actually go up, okay? I do see that as Russell goes down, a lot of these indexes go up. When these indexes go down, I've found that Russell tends to, you know, go up a little bit, okay? Now, what we saw on July 9th, all four were going up at the same time. That's pretty darn bullish. Where was that money coming from? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. You can take a look at a lot of different ETFs, you have a lot of different indexes, um, but these are the ones that I pay most attention to. And again, I have found even on lower time frames, if you take a look at a five minute time frame on these guys, uh, don't pay attention to the volatility above, but down here where you have markets going down, you know, Russell actually was was creating some some green candles. So on these, you had Dow Jones was red. ES was red, Russell was green. And now, admittedly, NASDAQ was kind of green, but money does rotate from one sector to another, from one index to another, and that's something you have to kind of pay attention to. Look at banking stocks, transportation stocks, consumer stocks, watch them, because they don't always move in the same direction. They usually, um, in some cases, do work in the opposite direction. And when one starts to move down and the other starts moving up, you can see where that money is rotating into. It's actually pretty fascinating to watch. Money rotates. It doesn't always leave. But if they're all going down at the same time, that is where you need to be paying attention to bearish tendencies. That's where you need to be looking to short the pullback. Okay? Like, I'm, I'm taking some you know, pretty risky trades trying to short the market up here at these levels. But also at the same time, I'm not on the train where where I think that it's safe to be buying calls every time the market pulls back. That will fail at some point. And when it does, people are going to get ruined. Let me just throw, throw an exercise out for you guys here. We're going to take a look at the S&P. And I'm going to go to an hourly time frame here. So what do we have here? Looking at the hourly, all right? So let's say you had $1,000 down here, all right? So you buy calls down here and you have $1,000 and you make 100%. You get out right here. You're like, all right, well, now I've got $2,000, okay? And then I'm like, all right, well, you know what? I'm going to buy some calls down here. And then the market gets all the way up here. And let's say you make another 100%. So now you're at $3,000, all 
All right. Then we get up here. You're like, all right, well, I need a pullback. So you get a pullback right here, and then you go all in again. So you're turning 1,000 into 2,000. 2,000, actually, this would not be 3,000. This would be 4,000. All right, so let's just be fair. We're doubling. We're getting up here. You're like, all right, well, I'm going to go all in again because that's what people do. They go all in, and that's, that's what's really going to ruin people. All right, so up here, you're like, all right, I'm going to go all in. And then you get up here, and you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm not not ready to sell yet right so you had four thousand you go all the way up here it comes all the way back here and what do you do well now you're back down to your normal thousand dollars because you just lost 75 percent because you didn't take profit up here and it came all the way down here that's going to happen but it's going to happen in such a bad way because you had a dip buying opportunity here did you take profit up here no it came all the way down lower all right, did you take profit up here? Probably not, and it came back down here. Does this look like an inverted head and shoulders here? Yeah, it, it kind of does. You've got kind of a neckline up here. If we come back up here, we're probably gonna push through it, but at some point, the market is going to sell off in a significant way, and everybody that continues going all in on options that has been historically making these big, big gains, they're gonna lose everything because that's how options work. That's how options work. They are going to be in disbelief that the market is pulling back so hard. And, you know, we're taking little steps up, but we can easily take that elevator down. So I'm cautioning everyone. I, I'm not disputing that buying calls isn't working because it is. Calls has been working. Calls have been paying. But you really need to be careful. And I don't want to be like your dad here talking to you guys, but I, I really want you guys to exercise caution if you're buying, um, you know, straight calls and you still need to manage your risk appropriately um, because just as easily as we've been just taking the stair steps up, um, you know, another one of these guys where we have three big red days in a row, that could destroy calls. Because a lot of people don't buy in the money calls. A lot of people buy out of the money calls hoping that they go in the money. Um, and, you know, even this, if you bought in the money calls on SPY, you'd still find yourself upside down. So I just want you guys to be very, very careful. Um, I would say that, again, yeah, it's probably still safe buying calls. But just keep in mind, um, I'm short through, uh, through the middle of August. I'm short through the middle of August. So I just want you to be very, very careful. Um, so hopefully that made sense when we talk about um, about rotation. Um, once you see all four of these indexes and you start to see banking stocks, consumer stocks, tech stocks, if you start to see all of them move down at the same time, that should be a big red flag that we potentially could see um, bigger moves to the downside because when you see all of them moving down, that means money is leaving the stock market. That does not mean that there is rotation happening. So just, just be cautious of that.